Legia by Edgar Allan Poe up for discussion today. You know what? I, I kind of like this writing, but I'm also humbled by it. You know what I mean? Oh, because we need a Posaurus to get through this <laughs> story? <laughs> wow. A, po- a Pokesionary or whatever? Like, uh, yeah. You you still have your Kindle, right? Like, do you use your Kindle to read it where you can, like, highlight a word and it'll tell you what the word is? Like, extremely valuable. <laughs> and you're going to do that every other word with a post story, especially this one. I, I definitely felt out of my depths. Well, on some level, isn't that part and parcel of why you choose Poe? You kind of want to leave the world behind. You usually get, like, this unreliable narrator. There's a hint of madness of you're not sure if you're in reality anymore. Like, all the DNA of a Poe story is there. But it's also worth pointing out, correct me if I'm wrong, you and I have never read this story before. So I also had no concept of what the plot was. Like, we were really in new territory with this one. And that's always a wonderful feeling of getting to read something for the first time, especially from one of your favorite authors. And it's funny that you mention that because my wife, after uh, I'd read this, and she had said, oh, what are you guys, you know, recording tonight? And I said, oh, we're doing a post story, Legia. And she goes, oh, I've never read that one. I was like, I never read other. And she said, why do you like Poe so much? And I think it is because he challenges me. It's a good escape from reality. The, the settings are almost always a character onto their own. And then the characters themselves sometimes become background. Or they are so interchangeable that it's easy to relate to a lot of things of Poe, even 100 plus years later. It, it's just so intriguing that it can captivate you in so many different ways. Yeah, I, I was going to say, you, you've mentioned before that you always like learning. Now, with the story, what I like about on the story level is like, okay, let, let's put it this way. You, you said you read Poe. Were you able to describe this in one sentence? Like it's a story about first love and memory it's a story about obsession like like how would how would you pitch the one sentence recap of this Ooh, the the poster line for this oh i like what you did there the poster line (laughs) yeah the poster line i would say you put me on the spot does your second love really matter now I had maybe a unique interpretation, at least I think it was. I I didn't do a ton of research. I did read a little bit online, and there were some theories out there about uh, references to romanticism versus Gothic and and, and the German versus, you know, that didn't resonate with me at all. On zero level was that like, okay, that's my take. I can see it. It's not my story. My story, uh, let me get your thoughts on this. The way he looked at Legia. Man, this man put her on a pedestal. I'm just mm-hmm. saying, like, she was this dark haired, slender, raven beauty. She knew everything, man. She taught him all these things. He almost lacked agency in some regards, he lacked knowledge in some regards. And this this Legia did everything for him per se in terms of having the knowledge. Like she was idealized on some level. I, I, again, that might be a little bit strong, but that that's my initial first blush. Yes, totally fair. I did have a question real quick. Have you ever seen those videos where they do the ideal or perfect face? Have you seen that before? Oh, um, where they like make things more symmetrical and they even out any blemishes and, and and, like the idea is generally the more symmetrical it is, the more you're attracted to it. But until it gets so perfect, then you're kind of repulsed and almost like, yo, this is something's wrong here. Yeah, exactly. And they've done this in many videos with the most beautiful people of Hollywood. And they'll take, you know, somebody that's absolutely drop dead gorgeous, uh, like, Scarlett Johansson and they'll show her face and they put the like computer graphic overlay and be like what it would look like if she had quote a perfect face and you know they pull the eyebrows out and fix quote fix the nose and move you know the the eyelashes and blah 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 and it's interesting of what somebody would consider perfect and where does that originate from yeah like is symmetrical perfect no 
Because like if you look at like guys too, of like your your nose lines up with the crack in your teeth, but symmetrical is your nose lines up with like one tooth. And it's very jarring, like you said, to look at. I, I love that you brought that up. It's actually going to feed into this. And either gonna, you're either going to come on board with me or you're going to hate this. So let, let me, let me, <laughs> okay, do let it. Let me pitch this, all right? So, sh- you know, to kind of fast forward after a lot of stuff, I mean, I don't want to... If you go listen online to the Vincent Price performance of it on YouTube, it is fantastic and highly Amazing. encouraged. Yeah. Yes. Really gets you into it. But to, to do the, uh, you know really brief compact version of it you know she dies <laughs> they both die there's two women it, both die <laughs> well the, the, the first was still sticking with legia though right like before okay. we meet rowena you know she asked him to read this poem right the conqueror worm before she dies again perfect literature perfect you know everything with her and I do like the writing style, right? It reminds me of Lespector where he describes the eyes and he knows that the eyes are determined, but he can't remember or understand where he met her or understand what she's thinking. Like there's this disconnect we have that we can never fully understand another person. Right. Right. Let, okay. me, let me just stick with that for a second. But let, then there's this last line that she says to him, a, a line about Will that was also in the epigraph. And, and the fact that Poe repeats it twice, I think we kind of have to double click on. But it's the yeah, and the will that therein lieth, uh, which dieth not, who knoweth the mysteries of the will with its vigor. For God is but a great will pervading all things by nature of its intentness. Man doth not yield himself to the angels, nor unto death utterly, save only through the weakness of his feeble will. Right. So now we're going to talk about divine and will. And I'm kind of curious what your thoughts are on this, that we have Legia, who's perfect. Right. We can't know her will per se, but we can see certain actions and parables and teachings of her. We are powerless around her because she's perfect and we have to learn from her and accept humility from her. And the conqueror worm, well, that sounds a lot like the serpent from the Garden of Eden. Eden, Just to hit it right on the head right there, I think there's a little bit of parallel that we have here with the seeking of knowledge. And then what happens when we get knowledge, right? Well, the fall of Adam and Eve afterwards, we have mortality, we have death. We have a lot more illness in our world and what happens when when we go after and meet Rowena, basically. For Legia, it almost does feel like she's angelic. If you took away the goth setting, if you took away your knowledge of knowing this was Poe and you just read the pieces describing Legia in her perfection, it feels angelic or almost reverent of a godlike figure, a perfect being. Because he describes not only her beauty, but like her as a person, that she was just perfect in everything she did. And it's almost like you don't feel worthy. The narrator doesn't feel worthy of Legia. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's almost like how, if we take the biblical story of Adam and Eve, Adam didn't feel almost worthy of being in the garden he's tempted with knowledge eats from the tree of life and is thus cursed with suffering cursed with illness kicked out of perfection because to your exact point about that perfect image thing right like there's something just not beautiful about perfect we always want to pervert it we always want to we always want to fail sometimes and we keep failing over and over and over again so do you think that the narrator might have killed Legia. Oh, a hundred percent. You didn't think that? Like, yeah. you have. Oh, I did. You know, I'm getting your take. No, I totally did. I'm like, oh, he killed this lady. He couldn't stand losing her, so he killed her because he loved her so much. That that weird rationale. <laughs> he 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 hated losing perfection. Is how I took it. And what he has now is he's losing his, he's addicted to opium and drugs, right? Yeah. (laughs) Can't keep stuff straight. Like this guy is out of his mind, like most Poe narrators. So, so can we really trust him? (laughs) No, absolutely not. 
uh, right? So so he doesn't know. Like some some hand put these drops of red in my lady Rowena's. Skipping ahead, we moved to England. We married Rowena, opposite of Legia. Blonde hair, blue eyes, com- you know, light versus dark. Right? We yep. obviously have a preference for the dark in this story, and. To, to jump forward to it, she starts getting sick and I can't help. I mean, come on, you, you got to give it to me. There was like a three day period where she was, was sick and started getting better. And then she died three days. Right? So, so then we have, we have the crucifixion and burial and then she the comes back ve- yeah. very briefly, which is literally the resurrection. Like you can't help, but compare that there is a biography of Jesus comparison with this story all the way from Adam and Eve through the fall, all the way through the biography of, of Jesus coming and being born. But the, but the weird thing about this story is, and I'm sure you're going to ask this question is what the heck is with, is it Legia at the end? Right? Like is our will to want something to be so powerful or is it so powerful in our mind that we think things are, but actually aren't. And that's, that is, ooh. Well, it comes down, I guess, to death and rebirth, and what does the rebirth look like afterwards? Because if Legia is perfect, but she's perfect in a human way, dies three days, almost resurrected as Rowena, Rowena dies, is replaced by Legia, is that an ascension of perfection upon perfection? Is that is that a double negative? What does it mean past death? What is the interaction of these two? And obviously, again, our narrator is is he's not trustworthy. And I think that he wants it to be Legia so bad that he is almost willing it himself to happen as as Legia is taking over Rowena's dead body. In his mind. Well, what does that mean for will? Right? That that we want something to be a particular way. If we if we view Rowena, and, and here's an interesting way to think about it. If Rowena is darkness, which can also be the unknown, right? Things we haven't discovered yet. If we're going back to that knowledge chase, the the, the will and the desire for us to have knowledge, right? The, the, why we got kicked out of the Adam and Eve garden of eden story right and rowena represents knowledge right what we move to where we have illness and sickness but hey that's not as that's not as sexy right like we're not really into rowena it's just what we have what we really want is what we used to have with legia and we will everything around us to be what it used to be what does that mean from a will perspective i don't know because the narrator, he, he's he's high on opium. Does he? I mean, obviously he has a weak will. I mean, he is succumbing to the flesh. He is succumbing to his baser urges and his nature of being a, an animal. He doesn't have the resistance to say no. And you look at the two women, and maybe they do. Maybe, I almost feel like Poe is trying to find what is the ideal woman. I mean, think about when he wrote this well over a hundred years ago of how different women were viewed and treated in his lifetime. Maybe he's trying to redefine what that true beauty looks like beyond just the physical beautification of women. What what does it actually mean? And I think that's important to note. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and, you know, if you look at it from like a Plato's forms perspective, like what's the ultimate form of beauty? What's the ultimate form of knowledge? Like that sort of thing. And if there's one thing that we've learned, just if you just look at life materialistically, right? Like if we just look at what we see is all we know, if we, if we don't accept any divine intervention, right? There are limits to knowledge, right? And and, and if you look at like what we've learned, about how to treat other human beings and how we want to be treated. We've come a long way, right? And isn't that kind of, I feel like there's a lack of desire to learn from our narrator that I think is harmful because rather than him learning or adapting, he's just like, 
um, Rowena doesn't love me. Right. And maybe she does, <laughs> but maybe she does. Right. Maybe it's just not the form of love that he saw with uh, Legia and he wants that represented the same way. He, he can't learn and move forward the way other humans can. That's interesting you bring that up because I kind of thought about the evolution of myself, the evolution of relationships and the difference of relationships as you have your, you know, first girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, your, your first relationship that is uh, non-sexual in nature, uh, as you have your first crush, your first sexual experience, et cetera, you know, your, your, you know, baby mama, whatever. One thing that they kind of point out in the story is that when you have a young relationship, he talks about almost with Legia that it was all about the passion of the physicality of it. And then as he moves into his second relationship with Rowena, it might have been more of a mental relationship, a, a less of a physical relationship in whatever regard that was. And isn't that just kind of standard even so long in 2024 that that seems to still kind of fit of when you're in a young relationship and you're passionate and you know it's all about the physicality of your relationship and then as you get older you age we know that very well <laughs> our bodies are snap crackle and pop you, you have to turn to something else in your relationship and it's not going to be maybe that physical attraction anymore it's going to be what you have in common and I don't think he's ever evolved with either of these women in both regards. He only evolved with Legia in the physical sense, and he only evolved with Rowena in a metaphysical sense. And that has put a damper on both of his relationships. That's a great point, right? Because you've told me the line, you marry someone on a particular day, right? But that doesn't mean 10 years from now, 20 years from now, they're that same person. Right, but you have to still learn how to love that new person per se. And there's something almost, I would say, stigmatized, at least in, uh, I can only speak from my experience. I don't know what this is like all across the world, but at least in our culture, there's something very taboo about comparing like this boyfriend, this girlfriend, like they did this, but this one oh, was yeah. that. Like, <laughs> like it, it's not. It's something that is totally happening behind the scenes in every relationship, but we're not allowed to talk about it. No, right? it's almost about it. yeah. It's almost considered bad to compare the two because because they're two individuals, right? But uh, to borrow a quote from Clarissa Lispector, the taste of the fruit is not in the fruit itself. Mm. The taste is in the contact of the fruit with the palate. Yeah. Right? And it's it's your interaction with that person that's the relationship. It's not that person, right? And it's your interaction with the second person that is that relationship. It's not the person itself. So isn't it fair, because you're in the picture for both, to compare what those experiences are like, but it's so taboo to talk about. And that's like, it's not sorrows of young further level in this story, but there is almost something a little bit uneasy about how he compares like everything because man, I'm telling you, Rowena can't get anything right according to this narrator. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that kind of takes me to my last point of that the narrator seems to be so stuck in the, the physical representation of these relationships and how he's dealing with their deaths He's obviously feeling his, his after the loss of Legia with some type of, you know, substance abuse. And I feel like then with Rowena, he is still trying to fill this, his soul, for a lack of better words, um, the, him missing of her with another physical representation. And it really reminded me of the Taj Mahal because the narrator is building this like monument to his wife because he doesn't know how to accept death. And I guess that's one thing that came to mind for me of that the, the story really meant to me was how do you accept the, the death of a loved one? Do you drown yourself in some substance? Do you personify them in a building? What do you do to move forward when they are gone? 
And we've talked about this before that when you, you have like couple friends and when that couple splits, sometimes you lose both in the divorce in a sense. Right. And it's not, it's to an extent people say like, Oh, they had to choose which ones they were friends with. But on some level, some people are so disgusted with their own trauma that they burn down everything in that old life. They move, like this guy moved to England. They get a whole new set of friends. They start picking up new hobbies, not just to meet new, like significant others, but to reinvent themselves, right? And our narrator had no way or time to process that besides dipping into like the dopamine hit of narcotics, essentially, to kind of hide his pain. And I don't think he ever really addressed his trauma per se. And as a result, he never created a healthy sense of self yes, because it was so tied up in that relationship that he used to have. Yeah. And I think that's one of the other major points of the story is you should never define yourself based on someone else. <laughs> and if you do, you will never have a healthy relationship. And I'm sure that my wife has told me that because she's the expert on relationships. So I'm, I'm stealing that from her. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, n maybe next time we need to have her come on and tell us the answer to these. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for spending time with us. Edgar Allan Poe playlist down below. We got plenty of talks from him. Let us know what you thought of this story and what your interpretation was. We'd love to hear from you down below. My name's been Una. Thank you for spending time with us today. Peace. Peace.